Hello. This is pre-technical studies, grade 7. And in this uh, lesson, we are going to cover production unit. So, production unit is a substrand, this one, uh, under entrepreneurship in grade 7 curriculum. But this can be used uh, anywhere. You can use this even in college, in senior school, anywhere. Okay? It's not limited. But these are the introduction concepts to what this, uh, these things are. So we are going to cover production unit. So a production unit is simply another name for a business or a business venture or a business enterprise. So instead of saying I own a business, you can also say I own a production unit. So a production unit, what is it? A production unit is simply a business enterprise. Sorry. A production unit is simply a business enterprise, a business enterprise that uses economic resources to provide goods and services for sale with the aim of making a profit. Simply, just as we say, a business. So what is a business? A business is an enterprise that uses economic resources to provide goods and services for sale with the aim of making a profit. You use economic resources, and economic resources are resources that can be used to generate money and provide goods and services for sale with the aim of making a profit. So that is what a production unit is. Examples of production units or businesses are a portion mill, a salon, a barber shop, a welding uh, site, a cyber cafe. These are examples of production units you find in the locality. Even in your locality, you'll find that there is a portion mill, there's a salon, there's a barber shop, uh, there's a welding uh, store, there's a cyber cafe, etc. Now, how do you know, how, or how can you say uh, this business is so big, or this business is small, or this business, um, how do you, can you determine the size of a business? For example, we say that Coca-Cola is a big business, okay? But there's that cyber cafe in your town or that uh, small shop kiosk in your town, you say, ah, this is a small business. What determines the size of a production unit? Okay. What is it that determines the size of a production unit? That is what you're saying. How do you know this business is big? How do you know this business is small? One is the volume of output. The volume of output when talk about the volume of output, if for example you look at Coca-Cola, they say they produce maybe 10 million bottles of soda every day. But if you go to that local store or water store in your, in your town, maybe they, they sell maybe uh, 10 bottles of water in a day. So you, you can conclude that Coca-Cola is a big company or is a, is a big production unit because of the volume of output how much they how much they are producing okay the volume of output there of sodas or water that company is uh, producing another thing is the area covered by the premise for example you see that uh, in uh, in, a, in a local town allow me to use that example in a local town um, somebody has rented a small uh, room maybe 10 by 10 and they're selling water from there. But if you go to a company like Coca-Cola, it has scaled, it has companies all around the world and every company covers maybe an acre of land or more, okay? So by that, you can just con conclude that this size, the size of this business is big or the size of this production unit is big because if it covers uh, one acre or 10 acres and another one covers less than a plot or less than a, an acre, already you can know which business or which production unit has a larger size another thing is the number of workers a production unit with 10,000 workers and a production unit with 10 workers of course the one with 10,000 workers has a, is, is bigger in size okay so we are talking about the factors that determine the size of a production unit the number of workers is one factor another thing is the method of production for example uh, the one where you're selling water, you don't need a machine. All you need is a tap to open and close. But in companies that are producing uh, sodas, they need big and heavy machines. <laughs> uh, 
they need machines to mix this mix that and by that you can know that ah oh, this is a big company this is a big production unit another thing is the size of the market controlled for example if i tell you there's a soda called woodley soda do you know it of course no but do you know fanta do you know coca-cola <laughs> yes because they've dominated the market the size of market that they are, they are controlling is so big so big so when we say um, the size of the market controlled that is what we mean so that tells you if they control if they if they are known by many people and they are being sold in many places their products it means that production unit is big another thing is capital invested for you to sell uh, we, for, for, let us go back to an example of somebody who has rented somewhere and they are selling water and another one they, they've bought the uh, uh, chunks of land big chunks of land maybe 10 acres or a hundred and they are doing a lot of manufacturing you see those people need to invest a lot but for the other one who is selling water maybe they only need to invest less than a million okay so the amount of money that is invested tells you the size of a production unit okay the other thing is volume of sales so i tend to i tend to compare volume of output and volume of sales but uh, or many people tend to compare the volume of output is what they are uh, producing how much they are producing but the volume of sales on the other hand is how much they are selling for example you say coca-cola sells uh, maybe maybe a hundred million in the world around the world a hundred million uh, bottles of soda every day but that local shop at your uh, at, at our center or in our community maybe sells 10 or or maybe a hundred only bottles of water in a day so the volume of sales also tell you uh, the size of a production unit so i hope i have explained that well you can pause and go back to understand uh, to hear again the explanation of this so for those who will be getting these uh, notes you will see the explanations here so the volume of output it means is uh, when you're explaining about the factors that determine the size of a production unit the volume of output uh, large unit pro, 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 large units that is the word we use we have large units or large scale units and small scale units large scale units are companies like coca-cola small scale small scale units are come are those small production units at our local towns so large units produce goods on large scale while small units produce goods in small scale about the area covered um, by the premise a large unit covers or a, a unit covering large flow area is considered large while a unit covering small flow area is considered small the number of workers a large unit has many workers while a small unit has few workers uh -huh. the methods of production highly me mechanized uh, sorry highly mechanized unit with capital intensive method of production are considered large while small units use labor intensive methods continuation the size of the market controlled when a business controls a large portion of of the total market it is considered big when a business controls a small portion of the total market it is considered small so this is something that you talked about so i'm not generally reading <laughs> capital invested a lot of capital is invested in a unit uh, uh, it is considered big okay if a lot of capital is invested in a unit it is considered big in case small amount of capital is invested in a unit it means the unit is small the volume of sales large units make large number of sales while small units make small amounts of sale okay so you can order these notes uh, via my whatsapp my my number is in the description i'll put it in the description if not you can go to my channel bio and you'll find my number there or my email now what are the factors to consider when locating a production unit remember we were reading about the factors that determine the size now if you want to locate a business unit somewhere for example you want to take your electronic store in kirenyaga or in makweni what are the factors to consider number one if you want to sell let, let, let's use um, let's say you are selling something like uh, what like um, or maybe you want to open a meal a flour meal a, a big portion meal where now you can pack flour okay and sell 
So what are the factors to consider when you want to locate your business, your milling business somewhere? Okay, let us use a place like a um, mm -hmm. which place do we know? Turkana, a rural place. So what are the factors to consider when you are locating your business to Turkana or at Turkana? If you want to locate a milling, a flour milling business in in Turkana, what are the factors to consider? Number one is access to raw materials. <laughs> okay, if you want to locate your business there, you must know where will I get these raw materials. And in most cases, it is good to locate it at a place where it is easy to access raw materials to access to access your maize. Your maize is the raw materials there. Okay. Another thing is availability of labor. For example, you are not locating your business in Turkana. Maybe you are locating it anywhere. You know, you can locate your business anywhere. Where you are locating it, can you get labor? Can you get affordable labor? That is a question, that is a factor you should consider. Can I get an, uh, qualified people to work in this, in, in my company as an entrepreneur or to work in my production unit? Okay. Is that place where I'm going to locate my business? Do I have raw materials? <laughs> Those are the questions that you should ask. Another thing is the target market. Target market is one big factor that you should consider. For example, you cannot go to sell uh, meat in uh, in Maasai land. <laughs> Why? Because they have cows and they have goats and sheep, so they 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 get they have their own meat. But you can go and sell in Nairobi because many people don't have. Uh, uh, or in estates where people are not allowed to to raise or to, to, to rear goats and cows. So you should f consider a lot your target market. Another thing is the government policies. For example, if you go to a big town, you'll notice that you'll pay high taxes. If you go to a town that is not that big, you'll pay maybe lower taxes, depending. Okay? So government policies are one of the factors to consider when locating a production unit. Another thing is um, access to electricity. You cannot set your business, uh, a business that need electricity, somewhere where there is no electricity. You need to, to consider that. Uh, uh, your business, when, for example, if it's a portion mill, you need a place where there is electricity. For example, if it, you are selling water, you need a place where you can get water supply. So those are the factors that you should consider when locating a production unit. Access to supporting services. For example, you've opened a business and you've uh, hired a lot of people in the community. But again, in that place, there's no uh, water. Water is a supporting service. There's no, uh, there are no rental houses. There are, there are no hospitals. There are no schools for their learners. You see, those people will not work there. They... <laughs> What they'll do, they'll, they'll just go to another place. But in, for you to, to, to set up a, and locate a production unit, another factor you should consider, consider is access to supporting services. The last thing is access to social amenities. This and this are more or less the same. Social amenities are something like water, electricity, you know, hospital, CTC. Okay? So the factors to consider are access to raw materials, availability of labor, the target market, the government policies in the area, access to electricity and water supply, access to supporting services, and access to social amenities. Now, what is the importance of locating a production unit in a suitable area? So these are these were the factors. Now, already you've considered all these factors, okay? You've considered all these factors when locating a production unit. Now, what is the importance of locating a production unit in a suitable area already you've gotten a suitable area for example you've you've realized that uh, in nairobi you don't have uh, many butcheries okay so you've identified that nairobi is the most suitable place to set up a butchery now what is the importance of setting your butchery in that or that production unit in that suitable area what is the importance number one you access raw materials already you know ah Accessing meat in Nairobi is very easy. I'll just go to KMC. <laughs> or I'll just go to uh, that meat production company in Nairobi and buy meat. Another thing is availability of labor. 
if there's something that there, there's no if there's a place where there's no shortage of labor is nairobi okay is that's why it's the most suitable area to locate your production unit another thing is proximity to market already nairobi is a market <laughs> Nairobi itself, 80% of Nairobi, or let's say 50-60% of Nairobi is markets. So Nairobi is a suitable area because it's uh, close to markets. Another thing is good transportation and infrastructure uh, channels. <laughs> when you locate your production unit in a suitable area, that suitable area has good transportation channels and infrastructure. Another thing is security and safety. Hmm? There are countless number of police officers and countless uh, security agencies in Nairobi. So when you locate your production unit in a suitable area, you are guaranteed of your security and your safety. Another thing is expansion opportunities. You've heard stories of people when they go to Nairobi, they start a small business and in a few, in a few years, it's a booming business. It's a big business. Why? Because there is an expansion of opportunities. Okay. So those are the importance of locating a production unit in a suitable area. Access to raw materials, availability of labor, proximity to markets, good transportation channels and infrastructure, security and safety, expansion opportunities. So I know you're learning a lot and it's a lot to grasp, but you can watch this video again and again and again for you to understand these concepts. So if you come to the end of the lesson, um, Thank you for staying till the end. Kindly, if you're happy with how I've explained this, kindly consider subscribing and sharing maybe to other people so that they can see this. If you want these notes, I'm ready to help you with them. You, uh, there are many ways you can contact me and I'll give you them. So till next time, goodbye.